Welcome back to another edition of Man Cave Astronomy. Um, the last video was about doing some uh, some modifications to a Polar Finder webcam, and I didn't get a chance to get the scope out last weekend and, and check everything out like I wanted to. Um, and basically, the reason for that was is because as I did the modification to the to the, the Polar Finder here. Um, taking the piece of rubber and, and getting it positioned and trying the webcam and, and doing all all the stuff that I did um, I ended up breaking my polar finder scope so I am certainly not going to do a modification video on um, <clears throat> the, the piece that I made and how to fit that webcam to the polar finder um, because I ended up breaking an inner lens in the polar finder, unscrewing and screwing the the little the little end here, um, and I just wanted to make a quick video on do not screw that end piece in very tightly. Um, you need it snug, but not very snug. And the reason for that is because what happens is when you screw that end piece in, it presses against a lens stop that holds the lens that has your uh, star map on it basically as, as we'll call it um, the, little, the little printed diagram that the, the red LED lights up so you can align this thing to the North Star the little cross and the, the long leg coming off with your degrees um, when you screw that piece in too tight it presses on that lens and it breaks it um, now I have a nice a fracture all the way across the lens um, and it's going to be really hard to um, look through that lens at night and um, do a good polar alignment now so and I called I called Mead um, kind of one of the other reasons I haven't made a video here lately because I've been trying to figure out what I want to do um, as far as as far as this goes um, I called Mead uh, today's Friday, uh, September 28th, and I called Mead yesterday. So it was either Thursday or Wednesday, one or the other, and uh, talked to Mead and asked if they they still produce that that Polar Finder uh, scope and uh, or if they still had some available. And they did not. They do not have anything available for this mount anymore. Um, when I bought the mount, uh, right before I bought the mount, I called me. It's been about six, eight months ago. Now um, they did still have both drive motors in stock, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. But they do not have the Polar Finder um, in stock, so um, they're not going to have it basically because it's a five-year-old model tripod. They don't. They're not going to sell any more serviceable parts for it. So. Um, you know just a little word of caution um, I don't think um, the modification that I did actually broke the the internal lens would I mean it, it did break the internal lens don't get me wrong but um, I think what I'm trying to let you guys know is is that if you tighten down on that actual um, you can move you can screw and unscrew this ring as you see here in and out to, to focus the, the polar finder as you screw that in and out, if you tighten down on that piece, particularly a little too tightly, um, you know it, it presses in on that that inner lens and it, it will break it. And when you break that inner lens, um, your pretty much polar finder is done. So um, they're not very happy, not very tickled about this. Um, you know the modification I did shouldn't have had any any real part on that I think it was more my error um, as far as having a piece of rubber around that that eyepiece and was just trying to cr kind of crimp down and make sure that piece was good and tight and holding the, the piece of rubber uh, tubing that I bought and uh, that's what cracked that inner lens so um, now it's you know I'm gonna take the camera here and I'll give you a, a shot inside of the the polar finder so you can see what I now get to look through um, 
and you basically you can see that nice black line running all the way up through um, that's a hairline crack in the if I can hold the camera steady here that's now a hairline crack in the that that lens that has that that map on it so um, that's bad enough as it is but the worst part is as you can see when you turn the red LED on um, it just um, and it goes right across where the, the, the North Star is supposed to align um, so you know it's you know this is pretty much what you're going to be seeing at night with some some little stars in there and you can see that that crack just goes right across I'm sure it's probably an etch in the glass that those markings um, that, that lets that LED light reflect refract through it um, and that's why it, it lights up it's probably etching um, and, and you can see it's just this is this is just an absolute absolute nightmare um, so just wanted to to you know let you guys get a little insight on that um, you know like I said I, I'm, I'm lost um, at, at this point as far as um, you know what my next step is going to be um, contemplating buying a, a new telescope mount and set up um, you know I really like this 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 mount and this setup but uh but it's it's out of date um, parts are, are not available for it anymore and uh, it's just a, a grim factor reality that you know they just you know they want you to buy the newer and later versions of their mounts and and things not not picking on me by any means I mean that's what any anybody so um, you know that's something to keep in mind um, you know that's I was looking at a Celestron um, Edge HD 14 inch uh, telescope and a CGEM DX and Pro mount setup with it and those two telescopes um, both the 14 inch aperture on that scope with either the DX or the the Pro uh, mount equatorial mount um, you know you're looking at seven to, to ten thousand dollars and uh, um, if I go down to an 11 inch with the DX um, because the the 11 inch scope doesn't weigh so much it's about 28 pounds um, the Celestron DX um, mount holds a payload of about 50, probably 50 to 60 pounds. You know, they're, they're rough estimates of, of what that mount can run. Um, but 50 pounds is, is the recommended um, max payload for the DX mount. Uh, the 14 inch uh, optical tube assembly is is bumping in right around 45 pounds. I called Celestron and talked to them and I called a telescopes.com and talk to those guys and, and kind of got a census of um, what direction basically if you're gonna look at that look at a 14 inch scope you're gonna spend about five thousand on the scope and you're gonna spend another five thousand on the mount um, the Celestron DX mount like I said it's it's about a two thousand dollar mount um, and it, it holds roughly 50 pounds which is the, the rate that this mount's been at, um, I've read different, you know, I don't want to get off on a tangent on other products, but, um, you know, this mount I've read several different times that it holds payload capacities up to 50 pounds um, and, and things. So, you know, this thing fully dressed out with all the stuff I've put on it, um, it it's worked good. Um, there There's definitely some issues, but... Um, but you know for for what i put on there um overloading it, it it does its job and i haven't had a major failure so um you know like i said now it's it's more of a um you know unless i can get this thing to where i can either find a used uh polar finder um you know like i said folks i'm just not really sure what the future is going to hold for for this right now um and uh, if anybody out there um, that has watched this series of videos, if anybody knows um, of a polar finder that can be put into this mount and be used, please let me know. 
Um, because right now I'm pretty much dead in the water of any hopes and dreams of doing any astrophotography without doing a good polar alignment. Um, and that's kind of the, the downside, you know. Instruction manual that tells you every other page, you know, you don't need to do a polar finder uh, alignment. Um, you know, the, the scope should all work just, just fine and um, that's all well and good. And it's kind of like I, I said in the first, first couple videos, you know, the polar finder alignment is dead on. It sets the mount. And it's a good practice just to get in. And uh, now that I'm I'm in that practice of I want to make sure that the scope is set and dead on. Um, and I and I have seen that it does make a big difference. Um, you don't have to do so much alignment um, as far as when you slew to different stars um, when you do the the polar finder alignment. So um, it's a sad day here in the the man cave astronomy. Uh, world right now so um, but folks please be very careful with that polar finder um you know this this was totally i got side swiped on this one so um you know like i said all all hopes are, are pretty low right now and we'll see how things go i'm gonna it's supposed to be kind of rainy tonight so maybe tomorrow or, or sunday i might get this thing out and actually try to try to use the polar finder and see how bad the crack is and whether or not I can still do a polar alignment on it, but uh, but I don't know. Signing off from Man Cave Astronomy.